Hello, I'm Michael Wilde, and today we're going to be talking about UDIMs. They are a must when it comes to texturing and modeling inside of any 3D package these days if you're working in a VFX environment. It's kind of your industry standard go-to for UVing. I decided to do a video on these because recently I've been doing quite a bit of freelance work with people that don't use UDIMs and um, they found them a bit scary and kind of intimidating. Also, I've been going into some universities and the students weren't super comfortable with them and while they can seem kind of intimidating they're a must if you want a job in the VFX industry because it's how you texture and it's how as a modeler you set up your UVs for the texture artists. So I wanted to just go through them, kind of demystify them because they're really not that difficult but they might seem a bit intimidating if you're just used to a one tile texturing, modeling and shading setup. So let's just go through them, explain the benefits because they're really awesome and how you use them in three packages. We're going to go through Maya, we're going to go through Substance Painter, I'm also going to go through Mari, and then inside of Maya we'll also look at setting them up in an Arnold shader. So it's going to be um, a video explaining all the basics, explaining the theory, and then just kind of going from there, showing them the application. Cool, so let's get started. So I've got this model here. Um, this is a model of a camera I made years ago, so please ignore the topology because they are not, it's not the greatest. But we're going to look at the UVs because I set them up. Um, this was the first project I learned Mari with. So I set them up with a UDIM style texturing workflow. So normally when you texture an object, uh, if you're not familiar with UDIMs, you would probably just texture it in the zero to one space, which is here. UDIMs basically means that instead of using just this one grid, like you might have done already, you use the whole grid. So when you open up the UV editor, which in Maya is up here, UV editor, you will start with just seeing this, but if you zoom out, we've got this giant grid and you can see we've also got negative numbers past the grid lines. So this is our zero to one here, U, V, but to the right, we've got another grid and we've got another grid. So UDIMS is basically just making use of all these other grids. So why would we want to do that? Why would we not just put everything in one grid? Well, it's because UDIMS basically give you a lot more flexibility, gives you optimization, and it lets you play around with resolution on different tiles. So let's go through the benefits one at a time. First of all, so flexibility. Instead of having to pick, pack everything in here, then I can spread it out. I want everything to be a similar scale in this scene. And, but this piece here, for example, let's grab this shell. This shell here won't fit into this part at the moment. So I could scale these down, sure. But say, for example, I know I'm gonna be using a 4K texture image or even 2K, then if I scale this down, this is going to get less text resolution, but I want it to still have quite a lot of this image. So I could scale them all down and make the texture bigger. But let's say, for example, I was going with 8K as a default. I wanted it, this asset was going to be seen really close up. Then the only way to get this with more resolution in 8K image and get it to fit is to scale it down and make it a 16K image. Now I'm not hugely technical with rendering or how images are loaded in at render time, but I do know if you look at the games industry, for example, they often use just 2K images, but they'll use a lot of 2K images because it's much more efficient than loading in one 4K image. And I know that because I've learned Unreal previously and I was trying to load in 4K images in there and it was dying. So instead you just make more 2K images. And why is that? That's because a 2K image, if you go from 2K to 4K, while the number is just doubling, you're actually, because you're doing it on two axes, you're, it's four times as much information because it's two times this way and it's two times that way, two times two, four. So you've got four times as much data in a 4K image versus a 2K image. And that's as technical as I'm gonna go in this video, I swear. Yeah, basically, what I can do instead of trying to squeeze it in here, I can just move it one grid over, which I've done. And I've done that for the whole thing. And that way I don't have to scale them down. Another great benefit of UDIMS is you can group stuff. So say for example, you wanted all your parts that are a specific material, like the top of this camera. They're here in this one UDIM and I can just grab these now rather than having to search through a really clustered single tile. And then in my software, however I'm texturing it, whether that's Substance Painter or Mari, I know that this tile or this UDIM patch, whatever you want to call it, is one specific material. And that just means that I've got selection groups that I can use in the different pieces of software. So that's a real kind of workflow time saver. Also, UDIMs are just industry standard at this point. Um, I haven't worked at a VFX studio that doesn't use them. So if you want a job in a VFX studio, you need to learn this pipeline. And the final thing is I can change the resolution of different UDIMs. So what 
is a unit I'm going to do. It's going to give me multiple images. So instead of just one texture image when I'm texturing, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, so on. But this one, say for example, can be 4K, and this one can be 2K. This one could be 512 if I really don't need much resolution there. And then this one could be 8K. Now, usually in a production environment, we wouldn't do this. We'd keep everything consistent and we would scale just up and down the UVs. But if you wanted to, then that's completely possible with the UDIM workflow, which it wouldn't be with just a single tile. So to recap, because I've done a lot of waffling already so far, what are the benefits of UDIMs? Well, they're more flexible as a workflow for texturing and modeling your UVs. You can change the resolutions per tile. They're an industry standard in the VFX studios. You can use them for selection sets and they're better optimized for rendering because you don't have to use as large texture images. You can use multiple smaller ones. So let's talk about actually using UDIMs now. So when I've started texturing this, I've made sure that this square is filled and then I've moved on to the next one. You need to make sure that nothing sits over the line because otherwise the UV shells will be in multiple UDIMs or patches. Both those words are kind of interchangeable depending on the software you use. So I might refer to both, but a UDIM or a UV tile or a patch is kind of the same thing. So you need to make sure that they, if they sit in close, it's the same as normal UVing, they don't ever go over the line. And that's kind of it really. So UDIMs have their own naming conventions. This instead of zero to one is 1001. This will be 1002, 1003, four, five, so on until we get right to the end of this grid, which is 1010. Then if you needed any more, you'd go to 1011, 12, 13, 14, so on, 1021, 1022. So I actually didn't know why it started at 1001. And after looking into it, apparently it's just a convention from when they're invented. But also because you're starting from 1000, all your UV patches are only ever going to have four digits. Whereas if you started at one, you'd start with one digit. Then as soon as you got to 10, you'd have two digits. You would potentially have issues when taking it into other pieces of software with the amount of digits changing. This way, you always have four digits and pieces of software like Nuke can read it in as an image sequence and you can make edits to your UDIMs as if it was just a sequence of images one after another and it all works because it's only ever four digits. So software like Mari uses the same naming conventions 1001, 1002, 1003 whereas Substance Painter because it's um, predominantly from the games industry it doesn't use such a thing so there's a bit of a workaround to get UDIMs working in Substance but we're going to go through that in a minute. So let's get a model with UDIMs load up in Mari and we'll just go through that really briefly. So here I'm inside of Mari and I've loaded up a project that I worked on a while ago for the Foundry, which was the material workflow for them. If you want to see that video, that's on my channel as well. Um, but what we've got here is we've got three UDIMs for this asset. We can see we've got the strap on one, we've got metal bits on another, and finally we've just kind of got the watch face. So if we look at Mari straight away, we can see in the bottom left of the UV grid, we've got these numbers here. So we've got 1001, we've got 1002, and finally we've got 1003. And so just like I was saying, that would go all the way along to 1010 and then up to 1011. Also, you can see here it's saying that we've got 4K images. So the numbers are all the same at the moment, but I could change one patch, which is what Mari calls them, or one UDIM to a different resolution. If, for example, the strap needed to be slightly higher resolution and the others were holding up fine. Also, you can see that I've kept the strap on one. So we've got all this rubber strap on one. So I can easily select all of that at once. If I wanted to select all this metal to make a quick change on that, I can select that really quickly by using the patch selection mode here. And finally, I can select all the watch phase quickly by doing that. Not a must, but it can help speed up your pipeline. So really that's the basics of UDIMs inside of Mari. When you load an object in with multiple UDIMs, it will automatically pick them up. And it's the same as painting on a single UV tile, but you've got them across multiple and you can use this patch selection mode, which you couldn't previously. Also inside the node graph, if we load that up, I can do some things if I type in UDIM. We've got some nodes that are purely for UDIM. So we've got this UDIM mask, for example, which will mask off just a set number. So I'm going to double click that, bring the properties up. And you can see I can make a mask for just 1001, 1002, 1003. I couldn't do that if it was a single UV tile. So just things like that helps make your day a little bit quicker. So now let's pop over to Substance and see how it controls UDIMs. So now we're inside a substance and what I've selected is that camera geo from earlier inside of Maya. 
And if you've never used Udems before, this is exactly how you'll see this dialogue when creating a new project. And you can see here, we've got this import settings, create a texture set per Udem tile. So if we're working with Udems, this is the way that Substance works with them. It's a bit of a hack at the moment. Hopefully it'll get better one day, but this you need to do. So we're gonna click okay on this. And now you'll see in our texture set settings up here, we have our UDIMs. So at the moment, I'm only seeing, I'm seeing the entire object, but I've only got one UDIM or patch here. How do I view the others? Well, all you do is you click down this texture set list and now you can paint on multiple. Substance is a bit annoying in the fact that you have a different layer stack per every single UDIM. So if I put a material, for example, I'm gonna put this copper on this first one, and now you can see it's only assigned it to that UDIM. And then if I go to the next one, there's nothing there in that layer stack. To get around this, and I'll go more on this on another video, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop this into a folder and then I'm gonna instantiate this folder. We've got this one. If you right click, you can go instantiate across texture sets. Then we're gonna select all the others. And now, voila, we've got that on everything. So again, it's because Substance was made for games originally where you wouldn't have UDIMs and now it's finally catching up because VFX is using it a lot more and a lot more. Um, this is the workaround. Hopefully one day it'll be better than this, but for now this is kind of usable. And to be honest, this is why I prefer Mari, but UDIMs are usable in substance with this workflow. So finally, let's just have a look. Once we've got our textures, how will we set that up in Arnold? So we're back now in Maya and I've made a basic AI standard surface in the Hypershade. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load some textures to use in that. So let's just go with the color first of all. We're gonna to go to the color. We're gonna click this checker box and assign a file like we usually would if it was a non udem workflow. I'm gonna turn the filtering off just cause I do that by habit and I'm gonna find some images. So for now, I'm just gonna find something that I've used previously. These aren't gonna to align to the camera, but we're not gonna see it anyway. This is just about the workflow. So I'm gonna see here, we've got my base color, we've got base color 02, and we've got 1001, 1002, 1003. So I'm just gonna select the first, 1001. Click open on that. So you can see here, we've got 1001, but we know that we've got also got 1002 and 1003 in as well. So all we're gonna do to get that working is you can see we've got this UV tiling mode. So to begin with, that's just got off. So all that's gonna tell it is use that same texture on 1001, 1002, and 1003, and so on. So you'd have the same one image across all of your UDIMs, which is wrong. So what we're gonna do, if you click down here, we've got zero based for ZBrush, we've got Mudbox, but we wanna use UDIM. So although it says Mari, even if you're using Substance, you wanna use UDIM. And I click that, and now when you render, everything's gonna render correctly. And all you need to do is do that on all of your files for the inputs on your Arnold shader. And voila, that's working with UDIMs. So hopefully I've covered everything there fairly in depth, or enough at least to get you working with UDIMs and understanding why they're used and how to use them. So quickly to recap, you've got benefits because they're more flexible than working with a single grid. The resolution you can change per tile if you really want to. They're an industry standard in VFX. You can use them for selecting different materials or you can set up your UVs in special ways that can help your workflow. And finally, they're much better for optimization. Instead of using giant 16K images, you can use smaller, less, 8K or even more 4K images to help you get the same resolution. So that's it for this topic. I hope that's helped. Uh, this is a topic I found there's much confusion on. So I really hope that this clears that up a bit. I've been Michael Wilde. This has been using UDIMs for texturing, also setting them up in modeling and in look dev. If you need more on VFX, then check out my YouTube channel. There's more on there. Or you can sign up to my newsletter on my website, which is michaelwilde.co.uk. Cheers. Take it easy.